Greetings, everybody. Turn your King James Bible to the book of Isaiah. We're going to read uh, chapter 29. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Verse 1. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Now, I can't prove this from the Bible alone, but Ariel supposedly means Lion of God, and figuratively it refers to Jerusalem. At least that's what the commentaries say, but I look it up in the Bible and I can't find why they come up with that. So maybe it's just... Uh, Jewish fables. I don't know. Verse 2. Yet will I distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. And I will camp against thee round about, and will lay, lay siege against thee with a mount, and I will raise forts against thee. And thou shalt be brought down, and thou shalt speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as of one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Now, when they're talking about familiar spirits, they're talking about a witch that's talking to a devil or a demon which is absolutely forbidden in Scripture. If you want to consort with the enemies of the Lord, well, they got a saying, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. So, you want to play with fire? Not me. Verse 5, Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chaff, that passeth away, yea, it shall be at an instant, suddenly. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder, and with earthquake, and with great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame of devouring fire. In a previous uh, study in Isaiah, I covered where uh, in Peter, when Peter, in his book, talks about how the earth is going to melt and the elements are going to be burned up. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. Not good for the unbelievers. Verse 7. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munition and that distress her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but when he awakeneth, and his soul is empty, or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but when but he awakeneth, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite, so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion." Now, after the thousand-year reign of Christ, when Satan is loosed from his bonds after being bound for at least a thousand years, all the nations are going to go against Jerusalem, and God's going to bring down fire from the sky and destroy them. I'm not totally convinced that this is talking about that specific instance, but I believe it is. Verse 9. Now, uh, that's the thing with a lot of this scripture and prophecy. Sometimes it'll be talking about the present. Then it'll talk about the future. Then it'll talk about something in the past. Then it'll talk about the future. And then it'll talk about the present. So it skips around sometimes. And not necessarily in that order. So verse 9, 
Stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out, and cry. They are drunken, but not with uh, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Wow. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Now, seer is just an old word that for prophet. That's what they used to call prophets back before they called them prophets. They were called seers back in the days of Saul. Where is a parallel verse of this in the New Testament? John twelve forty. He hath blinded their eyes. Who? The Lord. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. Acts 28, 27. For the heart of this people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their e ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See, the thing is, people will read this and then blame the Lord, but it isn't the Lord's fault. These people love their sin and wickedness more than they love the Lord. And when you put something else in front of the Lord... The Lord will say, okay, you want, you want to be rich? You love your money more than you love me? No problem. I'll give you money. I'll let you have your heart's desire. But you're not going to like your uh, ultimate destination. When you seek the Lord with all your heart and put him first in everything, You'll find him. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's go back. Verse 10, Isaiah 28, 29, Isaiah 29 and verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he, say, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I am not learned. In other words, I can't read this. You know, the guy that could read it can't because the book is sealed up and it's closed. But the guy that can open the seal, he can't read the writing. I am not learned. Verse 13, Wherefore the Lord saith, Forasmuch as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Huh. So where do we get this? Parallel account in the New Testament. Well, how about Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, or often, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. 
Now, people, there's nothing wrong with washing your hands before you eat. I'm sure your mother's taught you that. But I'm sure that this is talking about they had a certain ritual. Oh, yeah, you got to put the soap in your left hand, and then you got to cover, you know, do the palm of your right hand first, and then you got to do the, the top of your right hand, and then you got to put the soap down, and then the palm of your left, and the top of your left, and, you know, they had a ritual. They had a tradition. I mean, I'm not sure exactly that's what they were doing. I'm just, you know, making this up. But they had traditions. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not, and many other things there be, which they have received to hold, as the washing of cups and pots, brazen vessels, and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Jesus, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Jesus, he answered, and said unto them, Well hath Esaias, the Greek rendering of Hosea, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, the people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Didn't we just read that in Isaiah? Yeah. This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Let's go back to Isaiah 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord saith, said, Forasmuch as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? See, these people were doing things in the dark, thinking that the Lord's eyes couldn't see them. Wrong. Verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it? He made me not. I mean, can you imagine a, a potter makes a cup out of clay, and then that cup says, you didn't make me. Compare this to us humans that the Lord created to honor him and, and love him, and are we going to tell the Lord, oh, pff, you didn't make me. I came here by evolution. You see, millions and millions and millions of years ago, uh, nothing exploded and it became the earth. And then it rained on the rocks for millions of years. And then the minerals pooled into these pools of water with all these minerals. And then lightning struck the water and then it came alive, and then it turned from a pile of goo to the zoo to you. And that's evolution. Do you understand? Many thanks to Ken Hoven there, by the way. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he hath no understanding? Is it yet, is it not yet a little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, 
and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Isn't that what Jesus did? He made the deaf to hear, and he opened the eyes of the blind. Isn't that what he did? Oh, yeah. Verse 19, The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off, that make a man an offender for a wood, for a word, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him, that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children the work of mine hands in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. That's interesting. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding. See, none of us has it all figured out. I don't claim to be a prophet. I don't claim to understand the Bible perfectly. Uh, and let's face it, people, the disciples asked Jesus when he was going to come back. He said he didn't know. He said the angels in heaven didn't know. Only the Father knew. And I'm paraphrasing, but you know what? If there's thing, if there's a th anything that Jesus doesn't know, who am I? So, none of us has it all figured out. So, but in that day, those of us that have erred in spirit, shall come to understanding. All right, everybody. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.